Well, I'm glad we're meeting about this. I'm kind of interested to see what Mitch has to share, but I wonder where he is. Do you think we should just reschedule? I don't know. We'll give him another minute here. I think. Oh, there he is. Hey, Mitch. Hey, you're on mute. Oh, um, sorry. I was on mute. Also, there's like a really bright light coming behind you. It's kind of hard to see you. Yeah, that's a little bit better. All right, so I know you had some stuff you wanted to share. Um, do you want to just share your screen? Present those slides? Uh, how do I share my screen? Okay, well, if you click the little share button at the top of your toolbar. <sighs> We've all been there. If you ever get that nervous feeling like you aren't fully in control um, when you join a Teams meeting, you're not really sure how to use all the different features, and you just want to have the confidence that you can join, be heard, be seen, and participate in the meeting, I'm here to help. We've all been on a Teams meeting and you're trying to present and no one can hear you or no one can see your screen. And so you're nervous and you're trying to figure out, it, it almost feels like that MacGyver moment where the bomb's ticking down and it's gonna go off and you can't figure out, how do I get this to work? Don't worry, we've got you. There are always two different options to join a Teams meeting. Click the click here to join the meeting, or you can download Teams, or you can join on the web. So what does it mean when it says you can join on the web? If you don't have the app downloaded, you can still be a part of the, the meeting and still join via Teams. It's just through a web browser. We don't always recommend this because Teams will actually use your computer's resources much better if you use the app experience. So if you were gonna hit the download Teams, I'll just throw this one at you. You're at home, you left your work computer at work, you need to join a Teams meeting, you don't have Teams on your personal device. It's happened to me before. And you come to this page, and this is actually where you can download the app. So you see your meeting, you see your meetings coming up. Got a couple minutes, I want to test my video and audio before joining. So I'm gonna go up to these three dots in the right top part of my screen and hit settings. This will bring me to the larger settings page, but really what I want to test is my devices. So if you hit your device settings, you see your audio devices, which breaks down to speaker and microphone, and then down a little farther, you see your video. So I want to make a test call because this is the easiest way to really see what's gonna happen when I'm in the call. It's actually going to act as if I'm in a meeting. Then your message will be played back to you. Hey, I'm just testing out this call quality. Test, test, test. Hey, I'm just testing out this call quality. Test, test, test. If you're happy with the quality of your message, then you've configured Teams correctly. If not, check your device settings and try again. Wonderful. And it will actually close out of the test meeting for you. With that, I was actually able to see, hey, can I be seen? What is my video like? What's my lighting like? And then can I actually be heard? One of the nice features of Microsoft is it gives you a preview page. So you're actually able to check everything before you just go live. When I first started using Teams, the join button felt a little intimidating, right? Because you just think you're gonna choose that and it's gonna put you right into the meeting. Not the case. If you hit these filter toggle things, it will pop up this panel on the right side of your screen and you can choose your audio, your speaker, and your microphone. And once you feel like you've got everything set, you're gonna just take one final check, check it all out, and that's when you actually hit the Join Now button, and that will actually launch you live into the meeting. There is always the fallback of the phone audio option. If you choose that, it will give you a couple different options. You can either have the meeting call you by entering in your phone number, or you can call in and put in a passcode, and it will sync up you as the participant on your phone with your video when you join the meeting. There's a bit of a delay. It's definitely not the best experience. If you can avoid it, do avoid it, but it is sort of a fallback uh, option. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this join now button. I am in my meeting. 
Let's just say I have something to say. You can raise your hand. This is one of our favorite at Bulb Digital. If someone's saying something that you agree with, instead of interrupting or stopping the meeting to say, hey Greg, I totally agree, you can just like, throw out a like, these are just ways that, that allow the virtual meeting world kind of connect with what it would be like to be in person. It, it allows you to sort of give some reaction, I mean that's what it's called, right, reactions, uh, without actually having to verbalize or interrupt when someone's speaking. So if you look at the top of your screen, you're going to see this toolbar, and because we're recording this, it would be helpful if I actually had my camera off. So how you turn your camera on and off is you literally just click the icon, turns the camera off, and if you want to turn your mic on or off, you just click the icon. The other really powerful tool is meeting chat and you're trying to have kind of a sidebar conversation with someone or you want to post a link maybe for everyone to, to navigate to instead of sharing your screen or as a leave behind even, this is really where you want to do those types of things. The next thing is you're probably going to eventually have to share your screen. So there's a couple options here with sharing. You can share your whole screen or you can share a window. So this will just choose one application or one window, really, and that's what will be shared to the screen. So you can still navigate. If you need to take notes in another application, you can still navigate and only have the one thing on the screen. Now let's say I want to share this presentation. Even though, I'm, so I'm sharing the presentation, this wouldn't be shared. You see how the, the red outline around my screen went away? That means that this is not being shared, and so then I can close this and I'm still just presenting this page. You can hit stop presenting. This little panel will go away. So the way you get that back is you just bring your mouse up to the top. You can hit stop presenting. If you choose share screen, let's say you are gonna be toggling between quite a few things. You want people to follow along with you. Uh, maybe I need to show two different applications at the same time. Like this and this. Now they can see the whole screen. So see how the red outline stayed? It is easy to forget that you're sharing your screen as well, so just be really vigilant about what type of information you've got on there, confidential, emails, that sort of thing. My sort of fail safe is literally just leaving the meeting and go back to your calendar page, choose the join button, go back to this preview page, and this is just kind of like a reset. It's a restart, you're, you're here, you're choosing things that you, you know will work, that you've already tested, and then just rejoin. And sometimes that can be the easiest, sort of less stressful way than being in the meeting and watching everyone watch you fumble around. If you do need to open up your device settings when you are in the meeting, you just hit your more, three dots, settings, device settings, and you've got that panel right here. What you feel like is picking you up better microphone wise um, or speaker wise, what has a better output. Teams can feel intimidating and it can feel like there's all of these different options and all these different buttons. It does allow you to be more connected to those you work with and that's what our work is all about, right? You definitely wanna prepare, you definitely wanna test and ultimately you just wanna stay calm. We all know tech issues do arise. Patience is key and just letting people troubleshoot on their own, figure it out and they'll be able to know how to do it. Uh, next time. This is how not to be the problem on your next team's meeting. So if you have questions, definitely leave a comment on this video and we, we can chat with you about um, what's tripping you up. And if you like this video, definitely throw us a like. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe to our channel. Um, we love helping you build a better workplace. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.